There is just one day of campaigning left in the UK's general election. Prime Minister Boris Johnson is pulling out all the stops, staging some stunts that he hopes will appeal to voters. Today, for example, he drove through a wall. It was made of styrofoam, but you get the point. Johnson promises to break the gridlock and get Brexit done, the slogan that is key to his campaign. The stakes are high and it's starting to show. Apart from stunts, there have been lies, dirty tricks and accusations of fake news. Redmond Shannon on the final push to win over voters. Get it done. Stop the chaos. I'll get it. Life imitating art. You can't deny it. This campaign ad is a clever parody of a scene from the movie Love Actually. Enough. Enough. Let's get this done. From the prime minister turned actor to the actor who played the prime minister. I thought it was quite well done. Uh, very high production values, but clearly... Conservative Party have an awful lot of money. Um, maybe that's where all the rubles went. Even Hugh Grant's nod to alleged Russian meddling was a welcome distraction for Prime Minister Boris Johnson, accused this week of ignoring a picture of a boy sleeping on a hospital floor. You refuse to look at the photo. You've taken my phone, put it in your pocket, Prime Minister. Social media accounts went into overdrive, calling the picture fake, even though it wasn't. This picture of a four-year-old boy Opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn didn't have long to gloat with this leaked audio of his own health critic. They don't like uh, Johnson, but they can't stand Corbyn and they think Labour's block Brexit. Embarrassments for both contenders desperate to avoid scoring any more own goals. The polls still suggest Johnson may get a majority, but even a small swing in the last day could yet have an important effect on the result. Redmond Shannon, Global News. London. As politicians scramble for votes in the dying days of the British election campaign, there's one corner of England where a long-held and little-known part of Canada hangs in the balance. Jeff Semple introduces us to a riding that's a little more maple leaf than Union Jack. This quaint British town on the southern coast of England is home to a little piece of Canada. Road signs bearing the maple leaf lead down a windy path to an old stone building flying a Canadian flag. Wolford Chapel was built way back in 1802 on property owned by a British army general named John Graves Simcoe. This is him. Yep, that's the, uh, that's the man. Simcoe became a British war hero during the American Revolution. In 1791, he was appointed the first lieutenant governor of a new British province called Upper Canada. Who is the founder of everything that we know today in Ontario. And if it wasn't for his decisions, we wouldn't be here. Simcoe founded what is now Toronto and helped to build the colony's military and first parliament. When he returned to England, Simcoe settled on this estate. Most of the structures are gone, but the chapel remains. Simcoe and his family are now buried here at Wolford Chapel. And as a tribute to his legacy, in the 1960s, this land was given as a gift to the people of Ontario. Then Ontario Premier John Robarts received the deed to the chapel and its collection of antique furnishings. The border gate, as it were, and here we go, we are now on Canadian soil. This local resident helps to maintain the property with support from the Ontario government. It remains almost exactly as it was 200 years ago. It's a simple rectangular building. Um, it hasn't had any additions or alterations. The chapel is now open to visitors year-round and receives plenty of them, as evidenced by this guest book, including Canadians delighted to find a great little reminder of home. Conserving Ontario's history is not necessarily just in Ontario. In some ways, it's a piece of Canada in Britain. Jeff Semple, Global News, in Devon, England.